For those of you who are surprised or confused by this beginning, let me assure you that this is an educational motion picture. Bar Educational Films presents Man and the State, Hamilton and Jefferson on Democracy. That's the title of the film. Allow me to repeat it so you won't forget. Man and the State, Hamilton and Jefferson on Democracy. Uh, oh yes, we must have a copyright. Thank you. What a treat we have in store for you today. For this film, we are bringing back to life two of the founding fathers of this great country of ours. On my right, the man who was instrumental in the ratification of the Constitution, the first Secretary of the Treasury, the friend and advisor to George Washington, Alexander Hamilton. And on my left, the author of the Declaration of Independence, the first Secretary of State, the third President of the United States, Thomas Jefferson. Do you know who you are? I, uh, am. You are? Tell us who you are. I am Alexander Hamilton. Very good. Very good indeed. And what is the last thing you remember? I can't. You must try, Hamilton. A hill. A hill? A hill. Pistols. A jewel. I fought a jewel with Burr. Aaron Burr. Tell us exactly what happened. We choose our weapons. Positions have been marked for us. We stand with our backs to each other. At the count of three, we are to turn to fire. One, 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 two, one, two, 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 three! All I remember was the flash of the muzzle of Burr's pistol. At the same moment, a great blow struck me. I fell. The bullet entered the right side, fractured a rib, passed through the diaphragm and liver, and finally lodged in the lumbar vertebrae. Thus died Alexander Hamilton. And, uh, Thomas Jefferson, what is your last recollection? Nothing so dramatic. I lived a long time. Perhaps too long. My last memory is of my bedroom in Monticello. This is the fourth... What did he say? I think he asked if it was the fourth. Why don't you tell him that it is? I will not lie to you. No, dear heart. It's still the third. I wanted to know if it was the fourth of July. Sentiment, perhaps. But at the end, it was very important to me. What day is it? It is the 4th, the 4th of July. The 4th. How fitting. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams both dying on the same day. July 4th, 1826, the 50th anniversary of the Day of Independence. Thomas Jefferson, one of history's most brilliant men. Philosopher, educator, naturalist, linguist, politician, architect, inventor, musician, writer. What did you think of him? Truly a giant among men. The truth, man. He was crafty in gaining his objectives. And unscrupulous about the means in which he used to achieve success. He was pious, but sly. Nor was he mindful of the truth. In short, he was a hypocrite. Alexander Hamilton. A genius with great ability to plan and execute. Arrogant and dictatorial. A clear and elegant speaker with a commanding style, a superb pamphleteer, editorialist, and political writer. Utterly lacking in sympathy or understanding for the common man. Brilliant, witty, fascinating, daring. He believed in nothing but the necessity of force and violence to govern men. What about men, Jefferson? How do you see man's nature? I believe... Man is a rational animal, endowed by nature with rights and with an innate sense of justice. 
Man is not at the mercy of conditions, but is capable of subjecting them to a higher standard, reason. In brief, I have faith in the common sense of the people. Hamilton, there are those like Jefferson who believe that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Believe me, they are mistaken. The people are turbulent and changing. They seldom judge or determine correctly. To govern as though men were reasonable is a certain way to lead a nation into chaos. I think we have established some basic attitudes, gentlemen. Now it is time for me to tell you why you are here. This is an educational motion picture. And this is the camera. You are the inventor. What is it? Probably some newfangled kind of telescope. The sound recorder. Here is the set, austere and simple as you can see. And since this is an educational film, we must teach something. And what we are going to teach is your ideas, gentlemen, your political philosophies. And we will do this through the medium of debate. I will debate nothing. Gentlemen, I am more than a mere master of ceremonies. I am also the director. And in a film, the director rules more absolutely than any king. And I, the director, say that you will debate great ideas. We all agreed. We bow to no tyranny. We will debate nothing, great or small. Editor, pop him off! Neither of you has an identity unless I give it to you. If I command the camera to cut, the sound man to erase the tapes, the editor to cut the film, you will vanish, cease to exist, completely! Now that you have witnessed the magic of the cinema, we can proceed. Since we are out of place in time, Hamilton and Jefferson can examine three major American crises from different eras, and I'm certain they will be happy to discuss them for us. Ladies and gentlemen, teachers and students, the first crisis, we bring you the Civil War. <laughs> In the early 1800s, sectional differences began to undercut the Union. The Northeast was becoming urbanized and dominated by manufacturing and finance. It desired tariffs to protect its industries. The South was agricultural. It relied on a plantation system to raise cotton, tobacco, and sugar. The South opposed tariffs, but wanted to protect its own peculiar institution, slavery. Guerrilla wars were fought to try to influence whether a territory such as Kansas was to be free or slave. Abolitionists helped slaves escape to the north. The abolitionist John Brown raids Harper's Ferry. Now Lincoln, opposed to slavery, has been elected president. Southern states secede from the Union. The South attacks Fort Sumter. War begins. Dear God, so it comes to this. Three men slaughtering each other. In 1787, I met in Philadelphia with Franklin, Madison, Washington, and the others to draft the Constitution. You, Jefferson, were minister to Paris that summer. We all, whatever our differences, feared what would happen if we failed to create a strong union. But there were compromises, too many compromises, and we created a central government too weak to survive. And now this. Jealous states, narrow interests, anarchy, rebellion, bloodshed. Yes, I was in Paris. But you were acquainted with both my views and my fears. And these fears have come to pass. A too powerful central government trying to impose its will on the states. The selfish states of America. States that stand as bastions against the tyranny of the federal government. But you desire Hamilton as a king. Better a king than a demigod. Elected only because he is able to sway the emotions of a mob. I would stake my life on the sound political instincts of the mob, as you call them. And what results? A civil war. The war grows, swells, prospers. prospers. Many in the North thought it would be over in three months, but the South wins at Manassas. Why is McClellan back from Richmond? Invades Maryland, but is checked at Antietam. 
wins at Chancellorville, but is bloodily repulsed at Gettysburg in the greatest battle ever fought in the Western Hemisphere. By leaving the public peace to the mercy of each state government, catastrophe has resulted. The acts of the United States must be supreme and binding on states as well as individuals. There are certain fences that protect people against wrongs. But the governing powers are always ready to remove them. There are certain powers not necessary to carry out effective government. But government will always be trying to assume these powers. Of course you will defend the rights of states, Jefferson. You are a southerner. A slave owner. I did not approve of slavery. Yet you own slaves. I fought to abolish slavery in Virginia. And didn't you sign a constitution that specified that the importation of slaves would be allowed for 20 years? It was a necessary compromise. There would have been no constitution without it. Whatever the case, more than slavery is involved in this civil war. The financial and mercantile interests of the North are trying to dominate the nation. That is the real cause of the war. And these are the interests you did everything you could to encourage, Hamilton. I encouraged the interests of those who fought continentally. And not just in local terms. The businessman, the professional man, the educated. Jefferson, these people were vital for an enduring union. You thought in terms of an artificial aristocracy based on wealth and power, ignoring virtue or talent. What more artificial aristocracy than your friends? The ignorant and arrogant planters of the South. Gentlemen, the war is over. The slaves are free. The first modern, all-out, total war won by the North because of superior manpower and productivity. But at what cost? What terrible cost? More than one million casualties. The South in ruins. But the Union saved. Thank God for that. It surprises me that you feel so strongly. Do you imagine that I love this country less than you? You said you considered the Constitution a frail and worthless fabric. Yet I fought with all my energy to get it adopted. I admit you did. You see, I never expected perfection to come from imperfection. The second crisis, the Great Depression. After the defeat of Germany in the First World War, the war to end all wars, a period of political conservatism, economic growth, and rapid urbanization occurred in the United States. By 1920, over half the population lived in cities. During the next 10 years, the number of Americans engaged in farming continued to dwindle. Comments, gentlemen? When Americans exchange their farms for factories, and their open spaces for slums, and they pile upon each other in cities, then individualism will be lost. The people will consume each other. Only when all kinds of industry are concentrated in the city can each person find his proper work. It is only the city, with its variety, that can give the individual choice and stimulation. What choice does an enterprising person have in a society of cultivators? In the 1920s, Americans lost themselves in jazz and sports. The automobile, radio, and movies became major industries. Mass production required mass consumption, so advertising developed. Industry consolidated into gigantic corporations. All enlightened men should desire the prosperity of commerce and those who practice it. When merchants prosper, all prosper. Whenever you see exaggerated fortunes, you also see misery and stagnation. We must not convert the government into an instrument for extracting money from the weak for the benefit of the powerful. But the prosperity is flawed. Tariffs are high and a large proportion of income goes to a small number of people. Now a mania for speculation grips the land. There is a fever to get rich quick, and everyone gambles on stocks and real estate. The stock market zooms to record highs. Paper millionaires are made overnight. The banks extend vast amounts of credit. 
On September 9, 1929, the market begins to slide downward. On October 24th, Black Thursday, the market crashes. Panic selling, suicides, millions lose every cent they have. Banks fail, factories are shut down, business is paralyzed. The Great Depression has begun. This is the inevitable and terrible result of believing that paper can produce as solid wealth as hard labor on the earth. Of people forsaking the land that made them self-reliant. Of rampant speculation abetted by the government. The interests of millions have been sacrificed to the avarice of a few. And meaningless scraps of paper called money or stocks or bank credits have been used by cheats to fleece the public while government looks the other way. When will we learn that nothing can produce but nothing? I cannot defend the harm resulting from unbridled speculation. But it is obvious that industrialization has made for a general level of well-being that no other civilization has even approached. I predict a government capable of these accomplishments will also be capable of solving the problem of economic depression. What you desire, Hamilton, is more meddling by the government. Hasn't the government loaded Americans with enough debt? It can best serve now by keeping its hands out of our pockets. Forgo your romantic notions, Jefferson. America is not a simple society of gentlemen farmers. It is huge and complex. The federal government cannot abdicate its responsibilities. Salvation will come from the energetic action it takes in regulating commerce, currency, and banking. Salvation will come from the traditional American virtues of thrift and hard work. If only our citizens are allowed to manage for themselves. The third crisis. Wait. Aren't you forgetting something? Forgetting something? We have film in the camera and tape in the recorder, don't we? What could I be forgetting? The second crisis. The Great Depression. What happened? Did the country survive? Oh, that... If students are interested, teachers can fill them in, or they can do research for extra credit. You describe the outcome of the Civil War. This is a short film. We could spend hours on each of these issues. I will not continue... Jefferson, I... let me tell you something. Performers are nothing. Talent is the easiest thing in the world to get. James Madison would have given anything to have gotten into this film. And I was just talking to Sam Adams' agent Thomas. yesterday. The country must have survived, or else he wouldn't be talking about another crisis. He could treat us like human beings. He said his power was more absolute than any king's. It's tyranny, Alex, nothing less. With your permission, gentlemen, the third crisis. The Vietnam War. I will not hear about this war unless you tell us how the country survived the Depression. I have prepared a speech and slides. Undoubtedly, the viewers of this film are looking forward eagerly to my presentation. So you will hear about and discuss the Vietnam War, whether you like it or not. Is that understood? The Vietnam War. In the last 2,000 years, Vietnam in Southeast Asia has been occupied over half the time by the Chinese, the Japanese, and the French. Are we agreed that he is a tyrant? Agreed. And it is better that we be destroyed than tyranny flourish. Agreed. You are with me then. I fought in the revolution. I am prepared to fight now. In 1957, Mr. Editor, whoever you are, do to him what you did to Hamilton. Pop him off. Eliminate him. Wipe despotism off the face of the earth. In 1964, the number rose to 60,000. Mr. Editor, he is worse than a tyrant. This man is a bore. The film would be better off without him. Fighting and... It worked. It worked. Now we have the responsibility of continuing on our own. But we don't even know if anyone will hear us. Does it matter? I suppose not. I may as well begin. I believe in a broad, flexible interpretation of the Constitution. And I believe the Constitution must be interpreted strictly. But when I backed the attempt by Congress to establish...
establish a national bank. Jefferson here opposed, despite the fact that the bank was needed. Nowhere does the Constitution give Congress the power to establish. For those of you who are surprised it does, however, or confused by this Congress beginning, let me assure you that this is an educational motion picture. Task. Bar the word educational films presents Man and the State. So, as you see, Hamilton Jefferson favors a federal government and Jefferson bound and hand and foot. That's the title of the film. By the interpretation of the Allow me to repeat it so you won't forget. Whereas I urge Man a and the State. Hamilton and Jefferson. A doctrine of implied powers. Uh, enabling oh, yes, our president copyright. and federal government to act Thank energetically. You. All powers well, not we have expressly delegated today. to the federal government. For this film, we are bringing back to life to two of the, the founding people. fathers of this great For country. Congress, of ours. Or the president. On my right, the, the man who was instrumental in the ratification of the Constitution, for them to the first secretary of the Treasury, power. the friend and, yet, and advisor to George Washington, when you Alexander Hamilton. Of the United States. Did you and not on my left, recognize the need the, the author of the Declaration of Independence, for navigation, the first and Secretary of State, and canal, the third President of the United did. States, and these goals, Thomas Jefferson, worthy as they were, required money. Do you know who you are? A good deal of money. And this money came largely through taxes. Yes. I but in uh, your first inaugural yeah. address, you didn't are? you promise not Tell to take from the mouth of labor I am the bread it had earned? Alex. Zander. Some expenditures are obviously necessary to Hamilton. encourage growth Very and good. safety. Very good. Very good indeed. And what is I the last see. thing you remember? As president, how did you stand in relation I to can. the Constitution you must when you purchased Hamilton. Louisiana from Napoleon? Did Congress amend the Constitution to give you power to do the hill? No, but speed was vital before Napoleon changed his mind. Did you acquire the citizens of Louisiana? A duel. With or without their consent? I thought a duel uh, with without, Burr. but Aaron I repeat, Burr. speed was Tell essential. us exactly what well, happened. since the Constitution we nowhere gave you the power to make this expedient purchase, for us. how did you justify it? We stand with our Thomas Paine suggested a rationale, the which we accepted, that the acquisition made no alteration Fire. in the Constitution, one, one, only one, extending one, its one, jurisdiction one, over one area. One, I see. What is practical must often control what is pure theory. What about the All Barbary Coast the clash at the muzzle of Burr's pistol? Did you not fight a war the against the Clash of Tripoli? Blow I did not actually call it a war. But you did bombard and blockade Tripoli. Yes. And American lives the were lost. Entered the they had to be taught side, to respect our flag. But this was not a war. War was never declared. You sent in a squadron of frigates. Yes. Without prior Alexander consultation with Congress. A quick and, uh, response to their... Jefferson? Insults and exactions was necessary. Yet this was not a war. I have already Nothing answered so that question. Despite Mr. battles Hamilton? fought and lives lost. No, no. Respectfully, sir. Time. Just what is your definition of a war? I had to do it. I had to. My last memory is of my bedroom in Monticello. This is the fourth. Bravo, Jefferson. What did he say? I think he asked if it was the fourth. Why don't you do You turned out to be a firm and decisive chief executive after all. Positively Hamiltonian, if I say so. No, myself. dear heart. It's still the third. I wanted to know if it was the 4th of July. I stretched the Constitution to the breaking point. Perhaps. It was made to stretch. I was compelled to establish but a at the permanent end, it was armed very force, important. which I pray has made itself felt in the world. Good I days. hope it's the good common sense of the people will warn them when our leaders it's go too far. My hope is the good common sense of the people July. allows our leaders to go far enough. The 4th. How Thomas. fitting. Thomas Peter Jefferson we're all alone here and now. John Adams both dying on the same day. We don't even July have an end 4th, 1826, the 50th Thomas anniversary of the Day of Independence. Do you think it's going Thomas on Jefferson, long one of history's most them. brilliant men. Philosopher, educator, naturalist, linguist, politician, architect, inventor, musician, writer. Where we were what did you think of him? You mean by lying down Truly a giant speech. among men. Yes. The truth, you man. He was crafty in gaining shall and unscrupulous about the means in which he used to achieve success. He was pious, but sly. Nor was he mindful of the truth. In short, he was a hypocrite. Alexander Hamilton, a genius with Fine. great ability to plan and execute. Arrogant yes, and dictatorial. A clear and elegant speaker with a commanding a style, a superb pamphleteer, editorialist, nation, and political writer. And Utterly and lacking in sympathy or understanding. A nation that would make its mark Brilliant, history. witty, fascinating, I daring. Of honest he believed in nothing but the necessity of force and violence to govern men. In a country whose what about silent man, path of happiness how do you see man's nature? To say. You believe I believe in the voice of the people. 
And you feel Man the is a rational yeah. animal. But the nation has survived. Huh? Endowed by nature with rights and with an innate survive. sense of justice. I wonder. Man is not is at the of mercy us? of conditions. And our disagreements. But is capable of subjecting them to a them. higher standard. Reason. Good night, Alexander. In brief. Good night, Thomas. I have faith in the common sense of the people. Hamilton. There are those like Jefferson who believe that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Believe me, they are mistaken. The people are turbulent and changing. They seldom judge or determine correctly. To govern as though men were reasonable is a certain way to lead a nation into chaos. I think we have established some basic attitudes, gentlemen. Now it is time for me to tell you why you are here. This is an educational motion picture. And this is the camera.